my crew went out on a mission and they got shot down. And here I was alone and, you know, without, without a crew. And what happens when you, when this happens, you become a spare gunner. And whenever somebody comes back uh, with uh, a wounded man, sick man or something like that, they call you to fill in. And they did this for a couple of missions. I flew with several different people in different airplanes until the fifth mission and I was called and there was one guy, one gunner was sick or something and uh, I, I was assigned a crew on the, this, this says Carfu, but it was, the ship's name was the Tarfu, T-A-R and F-U, and uh, they were the crew that had flown together for a long time and they were, actually I think it was their 25th mission, and uh, the, the pilot was a uh, well-known, well-liked pilot, he was a captain getting ready to be a major. And uh, uh, anyhow, they didn't tell us where we were going, but uh, until the officers were briefed, then they, we were sent out to the plane to get the guns ready and make sure the bombs were all. So we went, anyhow, we got there and the, and the pilot said we were going to. Uh, Bremen, Germany, the bomb, the uh, submarine pens out there. Well, this is pretty deep into Germany, and we were supposed to go in by by going up through the North Sea and coming in that way, and that which was a long way. But on the way back, we were going direct, direct, and we would pick up our escort on the coast. We didn't have any escorts that were, could fly that deep into Germany at that time. This was October the 8th, 1943, a day I'll never forget. And anyhow, we got uh, we got hit by any aircraft either going in or coming out of them. After we dropped the bomb, the uh, one engine was hit and we, uh, we kept up and we were under constant anti-aircraft over the target and fighter planes as soon as we left the target and we got hit again in another engine. Well, the B-17 would fly pretty good with two engines, especially after it dropped its bombs. We, uh, but we couldn't keep up. We couldn't keep up the squadron. Of course, the word was, if you're alone, nobody can come down and help you. And your best protection was staying together with more airplanes, more machine guns, and so forth. But on the other hand, when you become a solo plane, you're a prime target for the enemy fighters. And they came at us from all directions, like Indians surrounding a, a wagon train. They flew around and around and around, and finally they made a beeline for you. And they, in the meantime, Everybody's hollering through the intercom system in the plane. There's some coming in from the right at nine o'clock. Some coming in over to to the left. Uh, you know, from both hurt. I'm out of ammunition, uh, and uh, the pilot co-pilot evidently struggled with with the plane. You know, as it was, but uh, to get to the coast. But anyhow. Uh, the last thing I remember, they said that uh, the oxygen was out on the uh, on the left hand side. For the uh, the gunner on the left to uh, to hook onto the emergency uh, alongside the plane with small emergency oxygen bottle to hook up under that. And for me to switch sides with him, which I did. Uh, and all the time, all this was going on, uh, we didn't know who was hit. We felt this airplane get shot, shaking. And, uh, 
Anyhow, the last thing I really remember, I was firing out of the right side, and a fighter came to me and towards me, and his looked like his wings lit up. They were the guns firing from the wings, and like he was coming straight through the window uh, that I was firing at. And I ran out of ammunition. I got some air that took my ass. I was wearing a steel helmet. Took that off and threw it out the window at him, and then bam. And I found myself playing, uh, blown back to the tailwheel. And I tried to prop myself up, and I couldn't move my right arm. So I got hit there. And I didn't know what was wrong with my face, but I know there was blood and flesh all around. And I, I figured, I figured I'm dead. You know? And like I told you, I wasn't wearing the parachute. I was wearing the harness, but not the parachute. And that's all I remember until waking up three days later in the hospital.